You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. X-Roller, a fast, tricky, roll-and-write game. One, choose numbers. Two, fill and connect. Three, use bonuses. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum. This is Justin. And Mindy. And today we're bringing you a review of the Roll and Write game Hex Roller by Renegade Games. This is a 1 to 8 player game, ages 8 and up, 15 to 20 minute gameplay time, and MSRP is $20. This was designed by Rustin Hawkinson. I'm hoping I said that right. I kind of hesitate on that 1 to 8 players, right? Yes. Yeah. Roll and write games are kind of funny, because as long as you have a score pad and people can see the dice, like, you could play 100 people at this game. But, like, there's really no major upper limit, per se, if you've got the components with a roll and write game. Mainly because everybody's using the same dice roll, so... Yeah, as long as you can record it, you can play it. So why don't you give me your first impressions of Hex Roller? So first impressions are I actually picked out this game while we were in the store and I thought it looked really interesting, being just a simple rolling of dice and writing, obviously. But even the colors on the box are really nice. You know, just overall it feels like a nice game. And then my overall impressions after opening it... (laughs) It's a simple game. It, you got your pad of paper, you got your dice, you know, and you got your instructions, and that's kind of all you really need. I was really impressed with that, and also that it's a smaller box, so it's easier for travel. How about for you? My first impressions are, all right, this is a roll and write game. What does this roll and write game do from every other roll and write game that exists? Because the mechanic kind of says it in the name, you roll and you write. But it's how you can manipulate the dice rolls. It's how you can score that really separates all of them from each other. And you're right, when you open the box, it's almost like this lackluster thing. But I I was kind of expecting it from a roll and write game, so I wasn't too shocked by it. But yeah, it's your score pad, which is big, and lots of score pads, big plus there. A set of dice, and a very tiny rule book. So... Overall, first impressions are, this is going to be a fun little roll and write game that looks like it's going to be heavier than it really is. And I think that's the thing that I kind of got. I was expecting a little bit more mechanics, a little bit more uh, heavier roll and write game out of it than what we ended up getting. Not saying that's a good or bad thing. That's just the impression I had versus what we actually got. So what does Hex Roller do well? I think it does well with the whole freedom of being able to choose which dice you're going to use and putting that on your score pad and also what items you have in order to get your scores up. So you have a lot of different options in order to get your total score for the game you're playing. So I think it does that really well. I think overall it does really well with the dice (laughs) I mean, there's not much to the game. That's what my first impressions of what it does well. How about for you? Hex Roller does a lot of neat little tricks in a roll and write game well. So one of the big pieces is not just you're rolling two dice. You roll eight different dice, and then they kind of get grouped up on which face popped up. And you select two of the sets of faces. Now, that's a fun thing because not everybody's going to pick the same numbers. And... A lot of traditional roll and writes, you're looking at, you're rolling two dice or five dice, and everybody's using all the same dice every time, always. Where one of the fun choices in the hex roller is, which sets of dice are you using this time? So that's where I think one big plus pops up that I enjoyed. The fact that it comes with two different layouts on the score pad, I think, does very well. You have to make sure everybody's using the same side, otherwise things get really weird. But ultimately... It keeps that variety of you're not playing the same map, per se, if if that's the best way to describe it. Every game, you can mix and match a little bit up in that. And honestly, the other one benefit is, I kind of said it in my first impressions, I was expecting a heavier, a little bit more rules-intensive game and scoring, and it really wasn't. I think that was a benefit because this is maybe not your first roll and write game, but maybe your second roll and write game before you get to like even crazier ones that are out there. 
I, I think it does a good stepping stone of mixing it up and still being accessible even if you haven't played a roll and write game before. What were your opportunities with this game? My opportunities and just a little dick picked game is the dice. They come in multicolor, but the colors mean nothing. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of where I'm like, it's nice to see, but I don't know if it's necessary. I think it also confused us a little bit when you're trying to look at the dice and like certain ones are certain colors. And of course there's two of each color. So I guess that's just kind of my one part that I feel like could have been a little bit better. And this may have just been me, but I feel like some of the scoring parts weren't the easiest to understand to start with. I think once you understood them, it wasn't so bad, but I think like some of those could have been explained a little bit better. And I don't know, I didn't read the rule instructions, so it could have been me just not listening or something like that. But <laughs> even on the page, it's like a little harder to understand. And we never really got to the point where like, oh, one side has a little bit different scoring than the other until you actually look at it. And we were ready to start scoring. So I think that to start with would have helped to know a little bit beforehand. But I think those are the kind of two things that it could have done a little bit better for me. How about for you? I can agree with the dice coloring. I have no problem having colorful dice. I think it enhances the fun and lightness of the game. If the dice match those different colored zones, I think that would cause even more confusion, but it would be more colorful. But yeah, you're right. They ultimately don't matter. So why are there different colored dice to begin with, other than just to have colored full dice? If there's more to it down the road, I could see that being one of those pieces. My major kind of hold up or issue is there were certain situations that I don't know if we actually came up with any of them. Well, we thought of them, but I don't know if any of them actually came up in our games. But we were always kind of curious, what if all of the dice showed the same face? Mm -hmm. There's six sided dice that are numbered three through eight. What if all eight dice were threes? for example. Right. It doesn't talk about, well, if that happens, you re-roll all the dice because you have to have at least two sets of faces show up minimum. Even if it is, you know, seven threes and one not three. So, you know, it was one of those, there's, the rule book is just simple enough that I feel like there could have been a, maybe a little bit better examples or a little bit more explanation on, in these rare circumstances, if they came up, this is what you need to do. Overall, I like the rule book for the fact that it does try to keep it as simple as possible. Of like, roll the dice, choose one set, write it down. This is how you fill in boxes. Now choose a second set, write it down, fill in more boxes. Now your turn's done. But those corner cases, like I just gave, would be where I'm a little curious of where I would be able to find that information if I didn't Google search onto, like, forums or Board Game Geek or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, is this a $20 game to you? To me, yes. I think it's a great little game. I think it was just a really fun, easy, quick game to play with friends and people and even just the two of us to be quick and easy to go through. I, I know it's a one to eight player too, so I guess if you want to play by yourself, I don't know if I'd see it as a $20 game for yourself if that's all you're doing, but with other people. You know, it was very lighthearted. We could play through it. We could still talk. You're not just having to concentrate on it. So I think for $20, this is a really good game. I think it's a good price for that. Could it be a little cheaper? I guess it could be, but you actually do get a lot of scoring pads in there, especially because they're unusual shapes, maps that you're doing. So it's not just like, quick and easy write it down something like that there's actually like a thought process to the map that you're trying to use so overall i think it's a great price for the game how about for you i think it hits right on the nose at 20 dollars. i don't think there's anything i would change about it mostly because you have a double-sided color pad that's like a five by seven sort of big piece very easy to write lots of thoughts in the design and color and shapes of things you get eight dice in there too, so that's a factor. So like, while there isn't much in the box, and yeah, maybe there's you know a $20 game that comes with a lot more stuff, you're getting a lot of value out of each play in this. Nothing seems to be wasted. You know, if you just use every piece of pad, even if you're playing this game solo, you're getting a lot of freaking games out of this. More than a dollar per play sort of thing. So 
you're doing well there. So I, I have no issue with the price at all. I would recommend this game for people who enjoy roll and write games. I, have in the last year, have kind of discovered my love of them, and I want to play more of them. And unfortunately, to you listeners, we might have to do some more reviews of them. But that's just to keep kind of diversity in our gameplay and our reviews, but also kind of like, hey, these are fun games. You should probably check them out, too. I also feel that Hex Roller is a game that families can enjoy. You can use as kind of a background filler game. And ironically, it's a game that you're in, you're out, you're done, and like, hey, let's do that again. All right, everybody flip your sheets, let's play the other side. I think it has a lot of things going for it that people would enjoy. And even if you don't really like roll and write games, it's not overly complex to the fact of you have so many decisions you're, you have to make that it's going to shut you down into uh, analysis paralysis either. You? I think it's great for families and friends and, like, just getting people together and just quickly going through. You know, anybody who wants just a quick and easy game or anybody who does, like, you know, roll and writes that are simple or a little complex but not terrible, kind of give you a little thought process. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend it for, you know, a game night where you want to really, like, really concentrate on something and play, like, a long game. But I definitely think, you know, if you're having a big party or something like that and getting more people into wanting to play, I think this is a great game for that. Excellent. Well, this has been our review for Hex Roller from Renegade Studios, and you've been listening to Tabletop Arcano. I'm Justin. And Mindy. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as YouTube and Twitch. Make sure you leave us a review where applicable. Like, subscribe, get those notifications. As always, thank you for listening, and happy gaming. Happy gaming! You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.